Hi, I'm Wally Brill from the Conversation Design Team at Google. Today I want to tell you about how you can extend your brand through voice interfaces like the Google Assistant. Millions of people use smart speakers and digital assistants every day. They're becoming part of everyone's lives. For brands, they're an exciting new channel to reach customers and interact with them in ways we never have before. Interactive entertainment, shopping, games, education, and even customer service are available through a whole universe of connected devices. But when we interact with a brand through these new channels, how does that brand differentiate itself from the competition? That's what I want to show you. First of all, let's talk about conversation. Scientists have long believed that we've been talking to one another for about 150,000 years. That's quite a long time. But recent remains of an ancestor of both Neanderthal and Homo sapiens indicates that we may have been conversing a lot longer than that. Anthropologists have discovered that this distant ancestor had what's called a hyoid bone in their throat. The hyoid bone is attached to the base of the tongue and allows us to shape sounds and form words. So now revised estimates indicate that we may have been talking for over 350,000 years. Now, during that time, we've developed conventions of conversation that we all follow. We learn them before we can walk. They're like the rules of the road. For example, the cooperative principle. The cooperative principle was conceived by Paul Grice, a philosopher and linguist who determined that in any conversation, each participant wants to help move the conversation forward and to make the interaction successful. What this all means is that we have shared knowledge on how to converse, making it easy to have a conversation even with a total stranger. So it only makes sense that we would leverage all of these conventions when we design conversations with robots. The more natural the conversation is, the more people understand how to participate. So we're teaching robots to speak human, not the other way around. Okay, so we know we want the conversation to be natural, but we also need it to differentiate the brand or we miss a valuable opportunity. Just like TV, radio, internet, social, print, and outdoor, the interactive voice system like the Google Assistant is another touch point and channel for communicating with customers. It's an opportunity for brand extension that shouldn't be missed, but exactly how do we do it? The answer is persona. So what's a persona? Well, the dictionary defines persona as the face you show to the world. It's the impression people have when they meet you. It's the who of who you are in theater or TV. It's a, it's a character. Everybody has a persona. It's what differentiates us and separates us one from another. It's what makes us individuals. But it's not just a voice anymore. In a world of devices with screens, the persona is expressed through audio, sound design, visual content, interaction design, and even typography. Okay, so why is this important and why should we care? Well, Clifford Nass and Scott Brave at Stanford did a load of research into how we interact with computers. They discovered that within a second or two of hearing any voice, we automatically and unconsciously assign a personality to it, good or bad. We can't help it. In the voice, we can detect age, gender, level of education, register or the social status of the entity, and of course, if they have a discernible accent, we get a sense of locale, all within that first one or two seconds. But we go on to make inferences about intelligence, trustworthiness, and likability. So it's vital that when we design a branded experience, we create exactly the right persona for it. As my colleague James Jangola says, if you don't design the persona, the listener will do it for you. And now more than ever, the experience is the brand, so it's essential that we get it right. Now to indicate just how powerful persona can be in differentiating brands, we've created two airlines that don't exist. On the left, you can see important airlines. They're like a national flag carrier. Their strap line is, we're important and we will get you there. Very traditional. On the other hand, there's millennial airlines who say it's an awesome day to fly. A very different kind of brand serving a very different audience. Now, in the case of important airlines, which caters to business travelers, the brand is conservative, solid, confident, expert, reliable, straightforward, and safe. Just what you might expect from a traditional flag carrier. Once again, Millennial is very different. They're looking to reinvent travel. Their brand is bold, hip, fun, friendly, exciting, and delightful. A whole new way to fly. Next, it's time to learn about the customers themselves. We want to understand the demographics and the customer journey, look at the frequency of engagement and their needs and expectations. As I mentioned, the important airlines customers are generally mid-30s and up, business travelers, frequent flyers, high-value road warriors. 
The millennial customers are very different. First of all, they're much younger, late teens to mid thirties. They're holiday makers, backpackers, perhaps taking a surfing holiday in Thailand or young families taking the kids to Disney World once a year. So infrequent users. Now we need to pick a task or use case. What are we solving for? It's all about making something that's useful, usable, sometimes entertaining and definitely easier than the alternatives. Our colleague Jared Strauderman talks about how the benefits of voice interactions are speed, simplicity, and ubiquity. Speed, because I don't have to take my phone out of my pocket to get an answer if there's a smart speaker in the room. Simplicity, because what could take eight or 10 taps on the smartphone can be one spoken question like, hey Google, what's 15 times 24? And when I want something done, I can just say it. Hey Google, turn on the living room light. And as for ubiquity, the Google Assistant is on 1 billion devices worldwide. For the purpose of this exercise, we've chosen flight information or FlyFo for our task. Is my flight on time? Has it been delayed? Has it been canceled? Remember, when you pick a use case, ask these four questions. One, is this something people can do in conversation now? Two, could you do it with minimal to and fro? Three, would using it be faster and easier than the alternative or provide delight? And four, can it be done with eyes and hands busy? If you answered yes to most of those, you might just have a great use case. Okay, now here comes the fun part. This is where we create characters that might be a good fit for the brand and the task. For important airlines, we decided to model the persona on a traditional English butler, and we named him Terence Butler. Looking back, the important airlines brand is conservative, solid, confident, expert, reliable, straightforward, and safe. So Terence might be a good fit. Let's hear what you would sound like if you were doing the job of providing flight information. Okay, Google, talk to important airlines. Getting important airlines. Good morning, you're through to important airlines. Am I speaking with Wally? That's right. Thank you, and do you require information regarding your flight to London today? Yes. Notice two things. He says, you're through to important airlines, and then he says, do you require information regarding your flight to London today? That's very formal language, even a little old fashioned and very traditional, but a good fit for the conservative important brand. Okay, so what about Millennial Airlines? What kind of character would you expect to represent their brand? Meet Helen Highwater. Helen is a gate agent at San Francisco International Airport. She's 26 years old, super stylish, kind of a hipster. Now remember, Millennial is bold, hip, fun, friendly, exciting, and delightful. So Helen might be a good fit. Now, what would she sound like giving flight information? Okay, Google, talk to Millennial Airlines. Getting Millennial Airlines. Millennial Airlines, it's an awesome day to fly. Is this Wally? Yep. Great, do you want info about your flight to London today? That's right. Notice those same two spots. Instead of you're through to important airlines, Helen says, Millennial Airlines, it's an awesome day to fly. And instead of, do you require information regarding, she says, hey, do you want info about your flight? Very casual, very informal. So there you are. The persona that represents the brand is like any other touch point. It needs to be a designed experience that isn't left to chance. Okay, so you've created a persona, picked a use case, and designed the interaction. What's next? Well, it's not exactly like if you build it, they will come. When you launch an interaction, you need to ensure that people know about it and know how to get to it. So that brings up the invocation. That's what people say to the assistant to get to your action. Okay, Google, talk to Millennial Airlines. That's very simple and straightforward, right? But what if I'm a frequent user and I know that the Millennial Airlines action can do a number of things? I could say, okay, Google, talk to Millennial Airlines about confirming my flight. That would deep link directly into the part of the action I'm specifically looking for. It makes it much more usable. What we don't want to do is make the invocation overly complex. Ideally, it'll be closely related to function. Talk to Galactic Foods Recipe Wizard. That'll obviously get you cooking tips. Or talk to Bus Route to find out when the next bus is due. Finally, after all that, with the action launched, how do you drive traffic? Well, this is where we need to draw on traditional marketing channels. The call to action should be prominent in advertising, on packaging, and basically any way the brand is visible. That's the primary way to inform customers and get them to try it out. 
And of course, as we mentioned earlier, for people to want to use it repeatedly, it needs to create significantly less friction than the alternative ways of achieving the tasks, or in the case of games and entertainment, provide the light that brings the user back. So that's it. Just remember to leverage the conventions of human-to-human -human conversation to design the interaction, pick a use case that's going to be engaging and repeatedly useful, design a persona to extend the brand and ensure that people know about the action and can easily invoke it. Okay, thanks for watching. Now go and make something amazing.